All right, welcome back. Uh, moving on to unit 10. And in this unit, we'll be looking at conic sections. And first of all, we're going to be looking at the circle. Okay, uh, so you might ask, you know, what's a conic section? Well, conic sections, basically, these are the curves. So the curves, I'll give you a definition of what a conic section is first. The curves that result um, when a plane Okay, a flat plane, okay, intersect, intersects the, uh, the cone. Okay, so the shape or the curves that result when a plane intersects the cone. So, what's a plane? Well, well, actually, here, 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 you can see there are a couple of uh, diagrams here. So, we get, we have two cones here, one here and one there. We call this the, uh, Double right cone, right? Double, because there are two of them. Right circular cone. Usually we call this the naps, okay? Oh, naps, not napped. Uh, naps, okay, so double naps, okay? Um, a plane, you can see this is a plane. Okay? That's the plane. So you can see in this uh, particular diagram here, you see there's a plane intersect this uh, double napped cones and then results in this shape right here, this shape right here, and this is what we call a hyperbola. Okay, that's a hyperbola. We are not going to be looking at hyperbola today, okay, but we will be looking at a uh, circle, okay? We'll look at hyperbola later on. Um, so that's a plane, and this is the double napped cones, and then we have this line right here okay so we have two cones um, touching each other at its vertex right so this is a vertex this point right here is called a vertex and this line is what we call the generator generator okay so um, some words that you need to know okay um, so we are going to be focusing on circle today so you can see here's the plane. Okay, here's a plane intersecting the cones horizontally. You can see they are basically perpendicular to each other. Okay, so we have the cones vertically like that, and then you have a plane cutting through uh, the cones uh, horizontally, like perpendicularly. Okay, so 90 degrees. So if they are 90 degrees, okay, I guess. Oh, there's another word I didn't talk about. This is what we call the axis. Okay, so this is the axis. For the cones, okay. So if the plane and the axis, uh, the axis is perpendicular, then we have a circle. A circle would be formed, okay. We would have an ellipse. Again, we will not talk about ellipse today. We will, well, I guess I am right now. Um, but we have an ellipse if the plane is intersecting uh, the cones uh, at an angle. But you can see this plane is not very steep, okay? The, the angle in which intersects the cone is not very steep, okay? It's less steep, less steep than this um, generator here. We would, or the, uh, uh, it would form a parabola if uh, the plane intersecting or intersects the, uh, the cone uh, at an angle that is equivalent to the generator, okay? So if, if the plane in which it intersects with the uh, cone is the same as the, uh, or is parallel to the generator, then a parabola would form, okay? All right, so that's basically what it is. Uh, so there are three different shapes here. We got hyperbola, we got a, oh, actually four. Hyperbola, circle, ellipse, and parabola. Okay, today, again, we are gonna focus on circle. So, I mean, we've done circle before, and you know what the definition of a circle is, right, hopefully. A circle is basically formed when we have the a set of points, okay, a set of points that are equal distant, you know, that, that distance is what we call the radius, from a point, and that point is what we call the center, right? So a circle, you know what a circle looks like, it looks like this, here's the center, and then we have a bunch of radius, right, we call them radii, um, they are just equal distance from uh, the center of the circle, and then these is, or these points, right, these points eventually form a circle. Okay, so that's what a circle is. 
Now, when we are looking at the equation of a unit circle in um, earlier units, uh, when we look at trig, when we look at unit circle, I think I might have mentioned the equation of the unit circle. It was x squared plus y squared equals to 1. Okay, so in general, the uh, standard form of the uh, circle equation is actually quite similar to this. It is actually right here. Um, notice there is the x minus h and y minus k. That simply means that the graph will be shifted. Okay, um, in the unit circle, it's always equal to 1 because the radius is 1. You can see it actually equals to r squared, and because the radius is 1, so it's always equal to 1. Okay, now before we can actually look at standard form, we will review a skill that we learned in Math 11. We are going to complete a square. Okay, so hopefully you remember how to complete a square. You know, by the way, if you cannot complete a square, you're in big trouble. Okay, we're going to complete a square a lot in this unit. Okay, um, so what we need to do to complete a square is we need to first factor out the leading coefficient of 2 out of, or I guess in this case, out of the first two terms. Okay, and you don't have to do anything with the negative 5. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the coefficient of the second term, so 8x. We're going to take the coefficient 8, divide that by 2, so we get a 4. And then when we'll take the 4 and square that. Okay, so 4 squared is 16. And then, of course, we cannot just plus 16 because otherwise we're changing the equation. So we will need to minus 16 at the end. So we, you know, don't change the value of the equation. What happened then is this first th these first three terms results in a perfect square. This is actually x plus 4 squared. Okay, and now we need to take the negative 16 out. So we do that simply by multiplying by the neg uh, sorry by the 2 in the front. We get negative 32 and minus 5. And therefore our final result is going to be y equals 2 times x plus 4 squared minus 37. And that's how you complete the square okay so again we will use that skill later on today okay okay let's go back to uh, the circle equation here in the standard form um, the center is h comma k okay so because of the translation so h and k is the center and radius is r okay so let's look at this example here it says sketch the graph of the equation x minus 4 squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 16 and determine the following information here Okay, so first of all, we can figure out the, the center. Okay, center is where uh, the h and k values are. Okay, so in this case, center is at 4, comma, negative 1. Again, remember, it's y minus k. So if you see y plus 1, it actually means minus 1 uh, for your location of the center. So 4, negative 1 is right here. There is your center of the circle. Now, it equals to 16. Therefore, the radius... Remember, r squared is 16, therefore the radius is actually 4. So from our center, we're going to go 4 units to the right, 4 units to the left, 4 units up, and 4 units down. And that will give us a point in all 4 directions, and then that's all we really need to make a circle. Okay, so now it's time to test my drawing skill. Uh, not too bad. Uh, it's all right. It's all right. I mean, pretty close. I would say <laughs> pretty close. Okay. Approved by myself. There you go. Okay. So uh, there's the graph. Uh, we have the a center here, 4, comma, negative 1. We can then find a domain. Domain is going to be, again, domain from left to right. Okay. So the possible values of x. So it goes from negative 1 all the way to 8. Range would be the possible y value, so from bottom to top, so from negative 5 all the way to 3. That's the domain range. We can then also find the x and y intercepts. Based on the graph, you can see y intercept is actually quite easy to find. It's actually one of the nice points here. y intercept is simply 0, comma, negative 1. x intercept, however, is not as easy to find in this case because, I mean, it's still pretty easy, but you can't tell um, from the graph. But we can definitely solve it algebraically. Recall, to solve for x-intercept, what you need to do is you need to make y 0 and solve x. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to let y equal to 0 and then solve x. Okay, so this is going to be x minus 4 squared plus 1 equals 16. Okay, please don't expand the x minus 4 squared because we can actually just square root both sides later on. 
to solve this equation, make it a little bit easier. Okay, so now we have x minus 4. We're going to take the square root on both sides. And remember, it's going to be plus minus root 15. Finally, uh, x would then equal to 4 plus minus root 15. And those would be your x-intercepts. Okay, um, so some, I guess, practice that we need to do here would be completing the square and then solving uh, equations. Okay, all right. Um, Unfortunately, the graph or the equation that's given to us is not always going to be in standard form. Okay, it sometimes will be in general form. Actually, not sometimes. Most of the times will be in general form. Okay, so here is the general form. We have 8x squared plus by squared plus cx plus dy plus e equals 0. This will be the general form for all the conic sections, actually. But we have different conditions because of different shapes. Okay, for the circle, for circle, a can, uh, sorry, A would equal to B, and they are not equal to zero. Okay, so for circles, A has to equal to B, and they cannot equal to zero. And that's it. That that that, that is all the condition. Okay, for a circle in stand, uh, in general form. Okay, so unfortunately, there is no easy way to graph from the general form. So if we want to graph uh, circles or actually any conic sections, we probably actually need to convert uh, the equations from general form to standard form. And how do we do that? Well, that's why we needed to complete the square here. Okay. So we are actually going to complete the square for this. Now you might think, oh my goodness, in the past we only have one variable, so it's easy, it's not that bad to complete the square, but now we have two variables. That's okay. Okay, it's actually doable. What we need to do is we need to group all the variables together, like all the x's together and all the y's together, and we're going to complete the square for both variables. Okay, for both variables. Okay, so here I will show you. We are going to group the x's together, so x squared plus 2x, plus y squared minus 4y. Okay, and I'll keep the minus 4 here. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll move the 4 to the right this time, and then it equals to 4 here. Okay, so now we can complete the square for the x's and the y's, okay? Separately, of course. So then, because there's no leading coefficient, we can then just go ahead, divide the second term by 2, and then square. So we end up with plus 1 minus, oh, plus 1 minus 1, plus y squared minus 4y. Again, divided by 2 is 2, square is 4, so plus 4 minus 4 equals 4 here. The first three terms would be a perfect square. That's going to be x plus 1 squared. I will deal with minus 1 in a second. Uh, these first three terms would be a perfect square. That will be y minus 2 squared. Okay. And now we need to take the negative 1 and the negative 4 out. Usually we need to multiply by the coefficient in the front. There is no coefficient in the front right now. So we can just take the minus 1 and minus 4 out. And then moving all the constants, move all the constants to the right, uh, we would end up with 9. Okay, so that is the equation in standard form. We can then find the center quite easily. It's going to be negative 1, 2. So negative 1, 2 is right here. Now be really careful. The radius is not going to be 9. Okay, that probably is one of the most common mistakes. Okay, it equals to r squared, not just equal to radius. So radius is actually 3. Okay, so just be really careful here. Okay, so now from the center, we're going to go three units to all four directions. Um, and we end up with these four points. And then we can then join the points together, make our circle. Okay, so let's see. Oh, missed it. No, oh, it went. <laughs> oh, man. I have no talents in drawing circles, unfortunately. Okay, or not just circles, anything. You, you probably know that already, right? Okay, um, so there is the graph. <laughs> There's our circle. Oh, man. Okay, uh, domain. Again, you will go from left to right. And range will go from the bottom to the top. There you go. I'll answer all my questions. Okay, so um, if it's not in standard form, you just got to convert. Okay, so there is a practice question for you to try. Uh, yeah, good luck.
I'll show you how to do it in a second. All right, so there's actually a couple of ways to do this. Uh, you could either factor this, actually you can divide everything by three first, or you can leave that until the end, okay? Actually, I'm gonna do it until the end this time, okay? It doesn't really matter, to be honest, okay? And you know what, I'm gonna divide by three first. So I'm just gonna, uh, man, I'm so indecisive. You know what, I'm not gonna divide by three first. Okay. Uh, and then we have plus 3y squared minus 12y. But this time, I'm going to keep the x on the left. Oh, sorry, I'm going to keep the 3 on the left. Okay, so now I'm going to factor out the 3. Take the middle term, divide by 2 and squared, plus 1 minus 1, plus 3. y squared minus 4y, divided by 2 squared is plus 4 minus 4, plus 3 equals 0. We then have x minus 1 squared. Again, I'm going to deal with the minus one in a second. Oops. Three and then y minus two squared. Now I got to multiply the negative one with three. So I get minus three times the negative four by three. You get negative 12 plus three equals zero. Okay. And then I'm going to move all the constants to the right. You should end up with 12. Okay. Now notice in your... Um, standard form there is no coefficient here there's no coefficient there okay so make sure you gotta divide both sides by three so you get rid of the three so that's what i meant it doesn't matter when you divide it by three you'll eventually have have to divide it by three okay so there is our equation in standard form we can then plot the point here's the center one comma two radius is two so go two in each direction and there are my four points. I'm just gonna join the points together. So there is my circle. Okay, this circle is, is, is pretty respectable, I guess. Went over too much a little bit on the right, but respectable. Okay, um, what else do I need to find? Um, I got the radius. Oh, actually I haven't found the radius. Oh, I did, but I didn't write it down, I guess. Radius is two, because again, it's four. So radius is two. Um, what else? Center of the circle is done. Domain and range. Okay, domain goes from, where is it? Negative 1 all the way to 3. Range is going to go from 0 to 4. Okay, we also need to find x and y intercept this time. x intercept is easy to find because it's right on the graph. x intercept in this case is uh, 1, 0. y intercepts are not as nice. So again, to find the y intercept, you make x 0. So 0 minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 4. You could technically put, technically put 0 into um, x from this equation as well. Uh, and then solve for, uh, for y from there. Okay, that's, that's actually fine too. I just feel like this is probably easier to do. Uh, though you could have made a mistake there somewhere. I don't know. But anyways, just be careful. Okay, 0 minus 1 is negative 1 squared is 1 plus y minus 2 squared is 4 minus 1 on both sides you get 3 square root both sides you get y minus 2 is plus minus root 3 don't forget about the plus minus and then moving 2 to the right you get y uh, equals 2 plus minus root 3 and these are your y intercept okay so that is all for today uh, Hopefully it's not too bad. I guess some algebra and then you just need to remember the form. And hopefully it's not too difficult for you to remember. There are some practice questions for you to try. Good luck. Let me know if you need some help. Okay. That's it. See ya.